What's up gamers, GF Ditto here and welcome back to Let's Play Spectrobes. Now, in the last one, we dug up a couple of Spectrobes and uh, that, or a couple of new fossils that we didn't already have. And uh, I have acquired several uh, custom parts, which in between episodes I did go through and awaken the fossils with custom parts on them, except the new ones we haven't seen yet. Um, and... Uh, I went ahead and released the duplicate spectrobes from that so that we do have the custom parts available to us. So we're going to start out this episode by awakening those two fossils the uh, from the grill pod and the kasu pod that we got in the last episode. And then we're going to equip a couple of our spectrobes with custom parts so that we can see uh, exactly what that might do to, uh, to, to change them and improve them. So first thing is first, we are going to go ahead and go through the awakening process. Now, as per usual, I am going to uh, go ahead and mute my mic during the vocal part of this, just to preserve your ears and your hearing. Nobody needs to hear that. Um, and yeah, we're going to awaken these, starting with the Kasu pod and then going on to the grill pod. Uh, wish I got into Digimon, but it just never appealed to me. Uh, honestly, same. Honestly, same. Alright, so Kasupod, in you go! And here we go for the Awaken. Oh, an easy one. Cool. Alright. Oh, look at it. It's so cute. It's so cute. Alright, I am going to name you... You are a Kasumi. I am going to name you Cloudy. Yes, Cloudy. I feel like that's a good name. And that would have had a custom part attached to it, as will this grill pod. Which, this will uh, hatch into a grill din, and I already know its name. And the grill din is among one of the ones that requires one of the uh, most more difficult uh, vocal ranges. And it has a Grispit custom part. Nice, nice, nice. So it does have one of those. And this this name is obvious. It's never changed. It never will, probably. Uh, I am naming it Hydra. I may get it for my collection, though. Fair. All right, and then the next thing we need to do for our party building is we need to go over to, not the incubator, we need to go to lineup, and we're going to go ahead and remove four Spectrobes from our party here. Um, we are going to remove both of our primary battle spectrobes. We're going to remove uh, Drune, and we're going to remove Kuma. Now, don't worry, they're, they're coming back. They're coming back, especially seeing as how we haven't seen... Uh, we, we haven't seen a couple of them in action, uh, Kuma being one of them. But we need to go over to the incubator for this part. Uh, we'll go ahead and choose room one. And we're going to go ahead and place in two of our Spectrobes. So let's give this to Drune and Mace because they're right there. And then we're going to click this here. And there we go. So we're going to equip the Segu Star. And now we have a Segulara Octaus. Which is interesting. And then, if we go over here to Mace, we have a Spillash. And let's see what that does. It, ooh, the, ooh. And now it is a Spikenor Costa. Nice. Then they can go ahead and return to the party. Oh, I can't put them directly in. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. We'll go ahead and put Kuma and Fencer in next and see how they come out. We'll start with Kuma, who has a Coma Spur. And we're going to uh, equip that. 
touch the cocoon. Okay, okay, very nice, very interesting. Those those leg spikes. It has become Komodoro's Partho. And then for Shackleblad here, we have a Sashu Scar. Oh yeah, look at that blade. Oh yeah, now we're cooking with gas. We have become Shackleblad Blade. Ooh. Admire it. Just take it in for a moment. That is one of the most beautiful spectrobes I've ever seen in my life. I love it. I absolutely adore it. Cloud? Is that you? Right? Oh, yeah, and we can just pop them right back in. Except that the thing here is... Now I can't... I'm gonna have to reorder everybody. It's fine. I can either do that in the battle... Uh, the battle setup, or I can do that right here in lineup. I do like to keep my pairs together. Um, especially... Yeah, I believe... Uh, Mason Fencer have it. Yeah. Yeah, this is this is the right team. Everybody's good to go. So now, what's going to be really interesting is trying to see how these end up working in battle. Especially since both our primary uh, battlers have... Well, have them. Um, although, I do want to show off the other team that I haven't really shown off yet. So we're going to be seeing a little bit of, we're going to be seeing them for most of this uh this next area and then if there happens to be a boss we're going to go ahead and see them or and use our primary team for that. Phone updated I back. Welcome back. Welcome back. All you missed was uh, the boosting of the of the party and uh, Cloud Strife joining the party. I mean, at least th th at least much strife will be brought. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. All right. So now that we're all set up, it's time to go explore the other moon of Zeba. Last time we took on the orange moon. Or, I say took on, we explored. This time, we're exploring the second moon. And it's... Oh, wow, look at that. That that view from the small screen, and it's gone. Um, I did not change our party up, did I? I did not, so we're going to go ahead and flee this battle. Because I don't want these two in any combat before before uh, uh later on i don't remember if there is a boss here um if there is i want them fresh for it or as fresh as possible and besides we need to actually use all of our spectrobes this isn't you know this isn't a pokemon nuzlocke this isn't we're not trying to solo run spectrobes with only two spectrobes because why that's no fun at least in my opinion um, uh-oh. Oh, uh-oh. Oh, uh -oh. Alright, let's see what these two can do. Attack it! I told you to attack! Oh, wow. That was actually pretty... ...wildly solid. Um, Rollin's getting attacked directly while you two goof off. That's gonna be one issue, is the fact that Rollin is a key... the key member of the team. Like, they're, the Spectrum's job is to keep Rollin alive. And, you know, destroy the opponents, but... 
keep Rollin alive at all costs, and mm, these two aren't exactly doing the greatest job of that. Oh, there we go, there we go. Our team attack's getting a lot stronger. Wow, that took a while, but it did a lot of damage. First it pounces and then, like, bites. And that's when the damage kicks off. So Kuma and Sushi are a little bit more on the, uh... They're on the slow side, attack-wise. But they're also both really, really bulky Spectropes. I did really try to put together a bulky pair when I chose these two. <laughs> I haven't played Final Fantasy V in a good while. I might need to play that again. I mean, five was five was fun. I haven't played it in a while either. And then again, I don't play uh, very many Final Fantasies very frequently at this point because I, I'm just enjoying so many other games. What the heck was that? So, um... I don't exactly get around to uh, too many Final Fantasies too frequently. I, I do play them still, just like one at a time and spread out. There we go. I don't remember too much about it. I only work three days next week. I, I remember quite a bit more about it than I thought I would, especially, you know, my fish brain. Um, Considering the fact that I have the memory of a goldfish, it's a wonder that I remember half the stuff about games that I actually do. Alright, so anybody who hasn't played it yet, spoilers for Final Fantasy V. Um, <laughs> I don't know how you can spoil a game that old, technically, but... Like... Okay, we're, we're back at the ship. That's not right. This is why we need a map. Like, a legitimate map. Speaking of fish, Monday through Wednesday and second shift, so we... Okay. Noted. I, I still have to uh, figure out what that looks like for me. How often do you feed your fish in Dark Cloud? How often did I feed my fish? Um, well, seeing as how it's been a little while, uh, I don't exactly remember how often. Um, when I was first training it for the uh, Finny Frenzy, I fed my fish uh, probably multiple times a floor. But I don't know how, how uh, long you have to wait in between. And uh, feeding it too soon will just result in wasted bait. So... Last time I was playing and working on it, I only I was only feeding my fish about once every dungeon floor. Which, at that pace, it's going to take quite a while to get it there, but um, I, I'll need to just do the research to find out how long I have to go in between feedings. Oh, damn. Alright, no, we need to go back to the ship and heal before we can progress this way. I found the way we're meant to go. But Rollin's, Rollin's in bad shape. Rollin can't keep going like this. What 
the heck? Oh, come on. Yeah, do your jobs. Or I'll get Rollin to do it for you. Yeah, nobody's in great shape right now. Speaking of fish, nobody was speaking of fish. Every two minutes in real time. Okay. Awesome. Good to know. So I will be keeping that in consideration the next time. Uh, not necessarily the next time I play, because uh, that's gonna be it's gonna be really boring to watch Dark Cloud 2 if I'm constantly menuing. But at the same time, two to three minutes. Okay. So I would go three minutes to be safe. Um, at the same time, like it's part of the platinum achievement we're going for. So I would probably uh, recommend definitely. Doing it more frequently than I have been. For sure. Alright, so we're coming down in this way. And we're going to have to try and dodge some of these. Because... We want to get to the end area in one piece. Oh, crap. Crap. Especially now we definitely know something's going on here. You know what? We can... No shame in getting out of here for a couple of these. I'm now not seeing the way that I went. I had come this way. I bought apples, carrots, and cantaloupe because I need more fiber for a bit because I was a dummy. Yeah. Cantaloupe's yummy. I, I'm not big on apples myself, but I enjoy carrots and cantaloupe's just yummy. Especially salted. I've never had it salted. I will say that. Need a box of Wheaties? Not neither. Wait. You're you're kidding, right? Please say psych right now. <laughs> okay, we found something. Cool. Uh yeah. Sure as heck, we found something. Um, okay. Cereal with a lot of fiber. This is the mm, fiber commercial cereal. Oh, is it? I know it's the cereal that's most famous for uh, for having sports ball players on on the box. orange box. You know, come to think of it, I haven't seen a box of Wheaties in stores in quite a long time. Um... Yeah, you know what? Let's equip that too. Just to be sure. I get the feeling we're gonna find something here and it's not gonna be pleasant. It's been a very long time. So I don't know for sure. No sign of any crawl nest here, either. Yeah, I didn't think it was gonna be here, but... Oh! Whoa, so this is what's been causing that causing that massive shadow. You're the unlucky pest of the day. I'm gonna make you pay for defacing Zeba. Let's do this. Ikuze! Regularly in stock at my Walmart. Ah, uh, see, I haven't looked at Walmart, because I don't often shop there. 
um, especially for groceries. I remember a commercial when I was younger of a guy walking up to people and telling them how the cereal had fiber and the tagline was, mmm, fiber. It's also frosted mini wheats, if you've seen those. I know those. Okay, so this is very similar to the last boss, sort of. Uh, it's a Skessa, though, with uh, Skiva and Shenka, which they all dart around like mad. So the, the primary idea here is going to be to keep Roland safe. I did not expect another boss battle so quickly, and yet I kind of did, because like I said, if there's a boss battle here, you know, we want to be prepped for it. Um, so I kind of saw it coming, but like, at the same time, we just had a boss battle, a major boss battle two episodes ago. Actually walked to a biker and was like, I'll trade you some fiber Wow. Guess you got the shit end of the stick on that one. Okay, we cannot let them touch Roland. Like that. On the bright side, they're not doing much damage. That was a 16 point hit. I would be more worried, I would be significantly more worried if we had come in um, looking like we did before we ran back to the ship to heal, because Roland was looking at, like, 43 or 46 HP at that point in time. Um, so that would be significantly lower after that 16-point hit, and we would be looking at getting 2 code at that point. Or 2-hit KO'd. Alright. Nah. Okay, I'm gonna have to keep cheesing this because we I can't hit it. I should have brought uh, Bugsy for this. No lie, Bugsy Bugsy would have done fine. Yeah, we, we just can't hit it. My apples too much, but I always have to grab the small bags because I won't finish them before they go bad. See, I will eat apples because they're good for you, but I just... Outside of Granny Smith's, I really just, I don't like them very much, but I will also eat things that I don't like because I know they're good for me. Or, you know, because I'm hungry and sometimes there's there's no real option. If you're hungry, you eat, you eat what you've got, right? I would like to see what kind of damage I can do to you Except he's directly targeting Rollin and being a pain to actually hit. So I, I have to cheese it. I usually get red delicious. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, you already aware I'm not a fan. I'll eat them. They're probably... I wouldn't say they're my least favorite. My least favorite are yellow delicious. And it's still not... I want to finish it off. But I keep... Like, I get ready to do the attack, and that's it. Like, I cannot hit the damn thing. There we go. There we go. Mace got the hit in for the kill. The easiest to find all year round around here. Okay, fair. Awesome decor. Absolutely delicious. Oh. Oh no. Oh, that that was bad. Roland, what happened? The moons are slowing down. I just destroyed a huge leader crawl. I think it was causing the problem with Zeba's moons. Well, I've confirmed that the moons are returning to their original orbits. Good work. And what about the nest? Did you find it? Bad news. No sign of it here. Understood. Don't worry. We'll find it. Um, it has to be somewhere in Nanahiro, and we have to find it fast. We will. Keep your chin up. 
We're waiting for you at the ship. See you in a few minutes. All right, so here's the thing. If I was about to invade a star system or, you know... If, yeah, if I was about to invade a star system or, or let's say, a series of islands, right? If I know where their command center for their defenses is, and I, you know, I have all the distances coordinated, I'm either going to choose to place my, my base of operations somewhere far enough away that they're going to have trouble getting to it, or the innermost one where they'd never think to look and I have easier access to the rest of them. Um, Granny Smith is my favorite as well. Fair, fair, they're yum. Uh, usually Empire, Gala, or Granny Smith if I get apples at the Apple Orchard. Ah, uh, there you go. Depends what they have available. That's fair. Just nuke them. Unfortunately, that's not exactly an option in Spectrobes. But, like, for the crawl, if, if I were... I was about to reveal the Big Bad's name. Um, if I were coordinating an attack like this, like the crawl are doing... They've mentioned that there's a 6th and 7th planet in the system that are... They, they can't reach. Like, they would need a star a starship like the one with the key crests, or keystones, right? They would need one of those to get there. Honestly... Honestly, I'd put the nest somewhere on one of those. <laughs> or, or over on Genshi, the first planet in the system one closest to, uh, I guess, closest to their sun. Um, I, I would consider putting it there, too, because for one, nobody would ever anticipate that. And for two, like, then I have easy reach across the five. Or, you know, the crawl, I would say, probably have easy reach across all seven. Um, Alright. I wonder where the crawl nest could be. So do I. Um, oh yeah, you know what? Let's check in with all this and see if we have dug up any new cubes that oh, we can turn into things. Because w that would be a really, really cool thing to do right now. You found yet another cube. This one looks to be a Theta cube. I found that one a few times. It appears to be inscribed with text about charging the spectrobes. Charging? What? It says here that each type of Spectrobe has one special type of charge technique. During battle, press the A button to charge the charge energy of the Spectrobe fighting with you. Then use a charge technique, press the Y button to switch to charge commands. Finally, use the L and R buttons to select which Spectrobe you want to do the charge technique. I've been doing this the entire game. When do bad games in video games ever use their brains, though? There. Who would have thought that the Spectrobes had so much hidden information to reveal? I did. Excellent work! You've excavated a Kappa Cube! It's inscribed with unique data about searching with Spectrobes. Apparently, only child Spectrobes have the ability to search for things buried in the ground. Didn't you tell us that in Episode 1? Like, I'm not crazy, right? Let me know in the comments. This motherfucker told us in episode one that only child spectrobes can search, right? They each have different search ranges and search abilities. Some can find things that others can't. Yeah, some can only find minerals and some can only find fossils. It's true. Who would have thought that the spectrobes had so much hidden information to reveal? I would have. Got to go do rounds. Gotcha. Another cube with an odd name. This one is a new cube. Not new. New, as in... It's about to be inscri... It appears to be inscribed with text about fighting alongside Spectrobes during battle. Yes, it, it would be the Greek letter new. Uh, bad guys be like, I'm just going to stand here and let you charge up to a level higher than I am instead of killing you now while you are weaker. Fair. It says here that the key to fighting with Spectrobes is to use their attacks most effectively. Wow, these cubes really are garbage this episode, aren't they? Apparently, you should lure an enemy in front of a Spectrobe and then use a powerful charge tech. 
Who would have thought that the Spectrobes had so much hidden information to reveal? Literally none of this has been hidden information. Holy. We face difficult times ahead in our struggle against the Kroll. We must find and train more Spectrobes to fight alongside us in battle. I agree. Wholeheartedly. And that actually is the perfect place to end off today's episode. I want to thank you for watching. If you like this sort of content, please be sure to slay that like button. That tells the YouTube algorithm that more people need to see this video, and it'll push it out as recommended to more people. It helps out the channel immensely, and I would appreciate it if you would take a moment to, uh, to slay that like button, if you like this content. Um, then, while you're there, consider subscribing to the channel if you have not done so already. Ring that bell for notifications so that you can see when I have a new video go live. Um, consider sharing the, uh, the video on social media. That also does help boost the algorithm and helps uh, discoverability so more people can see it and say, Hey, I want to check that out. Helps out the channel immensely as well. Check the links in the description below for all the cool things that I do, including the Twitch channel that I am recording this series live on. And if you feel so inclined, feel free to drop by the comments section and tell me exactly how useless you thought each of these cubes were as well, and uh, what you thought of that boss fight, this series as a whole, Spectrobes overall, um, whatever, or whatever you, you may feel so inclined to say. And if you just want to leave a comment to help boost the algorithm and help out the channel, but you can't think of anything, just say, man, those cubes were trash. Once again, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!